Yeah. So the topic of my <coughs> presentation is uh, transnational Islamic networks rewiring the post-Soviet space. Uh, and uh, I am also from, not just from the, uh, I am not just with MGIMO, I am also with the Institute of Ethnology and Anthropology of Russian Academy of Sciences. Uh, yeah, uh, this is the new topic, uh, the uh, topic of networks, especially Islamic networks. So some uh, few words about networks and what I mean talking about the Islamic networks. Uh, anyway, networks are else, uh, elsewhere. We, 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 we are part of, of, of a wide uh, variety of networks. Uh, we are part of networks of relatives. We are part of networks of uh, acquaintances, uh, friends, etc., etc. Every day we are participating in, in these networks. Um, and uh, what is network in uh, this sense? A network is a social group based on the interaction of people uh, who feel their unity based on common goals. Now, these goals uh, are, you know, uh, we can uh, talk about the ethnic networks, for instance. We can talk about religious networks, Islamic, Christian, and so on and so on. Uh, so uh, what is going on in the post-Soviet space? Uh, Islamic communities in modern post-Soviet countries uh, are increasingly decentralizing uh, while the former centralized organizations, so-called uh, uh, Muslim boards, Duhovni Upravlenia, uh, are still existing. And uh, in this situation, Muslim networks are becoming increasingly important. They are acting beyond Muslim boards, uh, Muftiites. Um, and, uh, Today, I will talk about uh, the Novi Urengoy case, uh, especially to, to show you uh, how these networks work, and uh, Dagestani and Chechen networks in post-Soviet space in, in Russia and in other countries of uh, post-Soviet space, uh, especially about Georgia. <laughs> <coughs> Uh, so who works on this problem? Uh, uh, you can, uh, uh, I, I, I should say the first, uh, the, about the book, Muslim Networks from Hajj to Hip Hop, which was uh, published in 2005. Editors, uh, Miriam Cook and Bruce Lawrence. Uh, this, work, this book is now classics and uh, uh, what is good, only one chapter in this book from Quintan Viktorovich is about Salafi networks because, you know, uh, when we talk about the uh, Muslim networks, uh, our colleagues all, always mention Salafi radical uh, networks. So. Uh, Muslim networks still are studying under the lens of radicalization, radical Islamism and CV. Uh, you can see some, uh, you know, um, for instance, uh, Imtiaz Gul's uh, uh, article and also the famous book of Mark Segman, uh, Leaderless Jihad, and he talks about terror networks. <laughs> in the 21st century <coughs> and uh, uh, but we have uh, also uh, some uh, you know researchers who does research uh, in muslim networks not you know especially in radical or salafi networks so who does research in post soviet space uh, very good works of Marlene Laruel from USA, uh, Denise Sokolov, Ekaterina Kapustina, Ekaterina Demintseva, Dmitry Aparin, 
uh, and also uh, very good scholar Alexander Kwahadze from Georgia. He works on uh, Circassian networks and also on uh, Muslim networks in uh, Georgia and in Turkey. Um, and uh, his works are very interesting. <clears throat> Uh, so my field work and sources, um, I was uh, using field work methods, including participating observation uh, and uh, except the interviews with religious leaders and activists, I used also social networks, <coughs> uh, Facebook, Vkontakte uh, and so on. Telegram channels and uh, special groups in messengers, uh, mostly WhatsApp. WhatsApp is using very actively. And uh, I started to purposely study Islamic networks from 2015. But uh, actually, I started to do research on ethnic movements uh, in late 1990s, in 2000s, and I saw a lot of parallels, how they developed with uh, parallels with Islamic movements. And uh, uh, I saw that both ethnic and religious movements are using um, actively networks. Uh, so I started to do field work um, studying Islamic networks in Dagestan, uh, Moscow, Chelyabinsk, Novorinkoy, Tomsk, and also Georgia with Denis Sokolov and Aleko Kwahadze. Uh, so the, the, the first case uh, uh, is the case of Novorinkoy. Um, Novorinkoy is the uh, Arctic city in Russia, and this is the, um, uh, in Russia they say Gazova Stalitsa, um, gas capital of Russia, producing uh, more than seventy percent of uh, gas in in Russia. Uh, it was in Soviet time closed city, so called closed city, and uh, first. Uh, ethnic Muslims arrived in 1970s as Komsomol builders uh, in this city, and uh, then uh, the, the number of Muslims growth with, uh, by marriages and the calls. Uh, in, in Soviet time, uh, you could, you know, come to closed city just by Vuzava, it's, it's calls uh, from, you know, other cities. And uh, uh, Novo Uringoy was opened uh, the beginning of 1990s. Uh, and uh, the, the number of Muslims uh, was growing um, by migration. And uh, in 1990s, uh, started uh, form, forming a Muslim community in Novorinkoy. And we have uh, some um, ethnic Muslim communities, uh, Tatar Bashkir, Nogai, Chechen Ingush, Dagestani, and Central Asian. <coughs> These communities uh, are forming, uh, you know, uh, Muslim community. <coughs> Uh, so what uh, happened in Novorinkoy? It was very interesting. The local Muslim community was under the um, umbrella of the spiritual Muslim board of Asian part of Russia, uh, Dumachar. Uh, the mufti of this uh, Muslim board is Nafigullah Ashiraf, um, and he's uh, now in charge also. Uh, so, uh, in 1996 uh, was established the community of Nur Islama uh, of Dumachar. Uh, they, you know, uh, uh, built mosque on Kedrova Street in, in Novi Uringoy, and they invited as an imam, uh, Uzbek, uh, scholar Isamuddin Akbarov. Uh, but simultaneously in 1998, uh, the new Muslim community was registered, Iman, 
uh, which was under the Central Spiritual Muslim Board, Tzedeum, uh, uh, and uh, uh, the mufti of this, uh, you know, community was uh, Haidar Hafizov. Uh, he is Tatar. Uh, Nafigullah Sheriff also is Tatar. Um, and uh, in 2003, uh, Talgat Tajuddin visited uh, Novi Ringoy. And uh, this Tzedeum, uh, Central Spiritual Muslim Board, started building the new mosque in Novi Ringoy. And they started actively replacing uh, Dumachar from the Novi Ringoy. Uh, for instance, in 2010, Imam Isamuddin was killed in Tumen. Uh, and uh, 2012, the leader of Nur Islam, uh, Dmitry Chernomorshenko, was forced to emigrate to Turkey. Uh, and uh, in 2015, also, uh, the son of uh, killed Imam Isamuddin, Muhammad Akbarov, was forced to emigrate to Turkey. And uh, in, in also in 2015, uh, the mosque on Kidrova Street was demolished. So uh, Nur Islama community of Dumachar <coughs> do not exist anymore here in Novi Uringoy. Uh, and uh, since 2015, local Muslims are under umbrella of Tzedeum. Uh, but uh, in, in reality, what we say, we, we don't say the uh, United Community, Muslim community. Uh, uh, in, in this city, we can see uh, some groups, uh, traditional Muslims of Hanafi uh, and Chafi schools. Um, Uh, a very strong group of Sufis, uh, Dagestanis, Chechens, and English people. Uh, they are, you know, uh, comprising followers of the spiritual administration of Muslim of Dagestan, uh, mainly followers of Sheikh Said Afandi al Chirkawi, uh, and Chechen and English Sufis of various weirds. Uh, they they uh, are. Uh, Naqshbandi and Qadiri uh, Sufis, and also diverse youth groups. We have uh, here Salafis of various tendencies. Uh, they, we have um, traditionalists who follow the Hanafi or Shafi school, but are very critical uh, of the religious practices of, uh, you know, Hanafis and Chafis uh, from the North Caucasus uh, uh, and from the Central Asia, especially in the sphere of burial and memorial rites. Uh, and also extremists, mainly under the influence of the propaganda of uh, the Islamic State. So uh, we, we can, uh, as we can see, the, the Muslim community is not united. The, the Muslim, Muslim community is very mosaic-like. Uh, and uh, all these groups have their own leaders, uh, which uh, does have more authority than official imam and mufti of Novi Uringoy. <clears throat> this is the new mosque, the new one. <coughs> uh, in, in mosque, uh, uh, this is uh, Nogai leader, uh, leader of Nogai community, Novi Uringoy. And uh, this is the, uh, the sermon on Friday. <clears throat> so uh, uh, why we talk about the, you know, uh, networks, uh, how and how they are, you know, establishing and working here. Uh, uh, very interesting things are, you know, happening in uh, migration. Uh, especially in Novi Uringoy, I uh, did here field work in 2018. Uh, I saw that uh, here is, uh, you know, very actual uh, the, the processes of re-Islamization. Uh, because, you know, migrants come to the Novi Uringoy and they are mostly not practicing Muslims. 
So they are Muslims, yes. They say, yes, I am Muslim. I was Muslim before I migrated to Novi Uringoy, but I wasn't practicing Islam and I uh, had no idea about who I am in, in, in this Muslim world. Uh, am I Sunni or Shi'i? Am I Sufi or non-Sufi? And uh, uh, the here in Novi Uringoy, they are you know, uh, looking for some work and they are going to mosque or to the Halal Cafe. And, uh, you know, becoming Muslims because they are, you know, integrating to Novi Uringoy through these Muslim uh, networks. And uh, they are becoming Muslims here and uh, they are adopting the new form of Islam, not one in Caucasus or Central Asia. Uh, so uh, they are becoming, uh, you know, Salafis or Sufis here. Um, and uh, uh, they are very actively participating in Muslim, uh, you know, life of uh, uh, this city. Uh, uh, all in all, uh, in Novi Rengoy, we have 12, 30,000 men which can attend the mosque. And uh, on everyday play, uh, pr prayers, we have 15 to, 50 to 200 people. And uh, 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 1,500 people are praying every Friday, and this is very high number, and more than 2,000 on eight prayers. <coughs> uh, the problem of halal is uh, very interesting, and uh, it is, uh, you know, showing us uh, how Muslim networks are, you know, solving uh, very actual problems for Muslim community. The problem of halal was very actual in 1990s and uh, uh, at the beginning of 2000s, uh, the road uh, to uh, Surgut was opened. Uh, so Muslims, start, Muslims started to bring meat from the Caucasus, halal meat, uh, as well as other products, uh, jam, cheese, urbej, uh, wild garlic and so on. Uh, so they solved easily the, this, this problem of halal. Now from Central Asia, they started to bring canned food, chujuk and kurut. Uh, and uh, Muslims established network of halal cafe caravan. Uh, halal cafe is Amina close to mosque and Terek, uh, cafe of city and pies from Svetlana and uh, they have very uh, good uh, network of delivery of halal food. Uh, so uh, today uh, halal as a problem remains in factories. So because Gazprom does not provide special meals, uh, that is that uh, the halal problem is solved where Muslim networks can solve it but uh, uh, where the intervention, intervention of the Muslim board uh, is necessary, for instance, in factories of Gazprom, there is still no solution. So the Muslim networks are, you know, uh, very active in, in solving the problems of Muslims, everyday problems. <clears throat> Uh, this is how they, uh, you know, bring the halal food to Novi Uringoy. Um, this is Cafe Caravan. Uh, this is Cafe Amina, halal cafe. In, it is very close to mosque. Uh, the, the cafe, halal cafe Terek, uh, is, uh, it is Chechen cafe. Uh, and uh, uh, they have uh, uh, all cafe, uh, halal cafes here in Novi Uringoy. They have uh, this kind of, you know, uh, place to pray. 
uh, and um, so Muslims are, you know, uh, meeting here, eating here, and also praying here. So these cafes are the centers of uh, this uh, Muslim life here in Novy Ringoy. Ossetianski uh, piragi, yeah, Ossetian pies. Uh, uh, also, Muslim Islamic Muslim networks are, you know, very active in uh, self-organization of Muslim Muslim communities. Especially, the problem is the funeral because you know uh, they uh, uh, Muslims are keen to transportate the death to the homeland, uh, so they are, you know. Uh, fundraising for this and uh, uh, only only in Dagestan costs from 80,000 rubles it's more than uh, $1,000 and it is uh, sometimes very tough uh, for the families uh, so uh, the networks are you know uh, collecting this money very easily and uh, they uh, transportate the death uh, mostly at the same day uh, the muslim networks organized groups in whatsapp for mutual help which is especially important in the arctic uh, and uh, Young Muslims of Novi Ringoy have also created a mobile educational application, Namaz Dom, uh, uh, which runs on the iOS and Android platforms. Uh, this is because you know a lot of young people come to Novi Ringoy and they uh, cannot, you know, pray. So uh, this is for, uh, yeah, for their education. <clears throat> Uh, uh, so, uh, talking about the Novo Uringoy, uh, the leadership of Tsadoum in Novo Uringoy is formal and nominal, and uh, uh, the real leaders are authorities in Muslim networks, uh, trans transregional and transnational, and uh, these networks are linked to other Russian regions, to Dagestan, Chechnya, and uh, other countries, uh, Central Asian countries, uh, South Caucasian countries, uh, to Middle Eastern countries. <coughs> uh, uh, the, the other uh, network uh, is Dagestani networks. They are, they are networks of Muslim spiritual board of Dagestan and uh, they are following Dagestani migration. Uh, I would like to talk about the Tomsk case. Uh, Tomsk is the uh, city in Siberia, uh, very, you know, small, but very, uh, you know, uh, they have five universities, for instance, in Tomsk. So it's a very important city. Uh, the local Dagestani communities organized here in 2010, uh, the Union of Dagestani Peoples, and in uh, the next year, 2011, uh, Dagestani ulama, Dagestani uh, Muslim uh, scholars visited Tomsk, and this visit was organized by the Union of Dagestani Peoples, and uh, since then, uh, they are organizing regular visits from Dagestan, uh, organizing lectures in five state universities of Tomsk, uh, preaching in the white mosque. They have two mosques, uh, red and white mosque, so they are organizing uh, preaching in the white mosque and uh, uh, serving as imams, uh, Dagestani scholars here. Uh, and. Um, uh, Dagestani networks are organizing Arab language courses, Mawlids, etc., etc. So uh, these activities are, are strengthening networks in their and their position in Tomsk. 
and uh, Tomsk is a part of trans-regional Dagestani Islamic, uh, especially Sufi uh, networks. <clears throat> Uh, but uh, the, the inter transnational, uh, it, it, Dagestani Sufi transnational networks uh, include also the village of TV in Kvareli municipality. They have uh, 300 inhabitants. Uh, the, the official imam uh, here in village of TV has a little influence and the, the more influential are Sufis from Dagestan. Uh, for instance, uh, the local Imam does not lead prayers here. Uh, always uh, the prayers are leading by uh, uh, Sufis from Dagestan. Uh, so they lead prayers and uh, they give sermons on Friday prayers. Uh, and uh, they are competing with a local Salafi, Salafi community here in TV. Uh, so the, the uh, Dagestani networks are not just transregional, they are also transnational and they are uh, establishing these transnational networks uh, in, in post-Soviet space, especially in Georgia. <clears throat> Uh, we have also also very interesting Chechen networks, uh, unlike uh, Dagestani networks, uh, they are uh, not linked with Chechen Mufti yet, uh, and uh, Chechen networks are uh, very closed and they are not trying to work with other ethnic groups. Uh, for instance, in Tomsk, uh, they have their own prayer house outside of city uh, and the Chechen networks are mostly under Kadyrov's control uh, through Chechen leaders representatives in Russian regions. Uh, and uh, uh, despite Sufism is recognized as kind of traditional Islam in Russia, Chechens are not converting others to Sufism uh, which contradicts with active Dagestani Sufi proselytism. Uh, but uh, 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 traditional networks uh, with uh, uh, Chechen, uh, transnational networks with Chechen participation, we've all, we, we also have uh, these transna transnational networks are very interesting. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, we can see at uh, Gardabani municipality in Georgia, uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, Azeris here, and they are traditionally Shia Azeris. Uh, they are not Sunni, uh, but uh, they are, you know, migrating to uh, Russian cities, Chelyabinsk and Magnitogorsk. Uh, it's Ural, and uh, they are, you know, doing as a cars reselling business. So Chechens, uh, non-Sufi Chechens, are providing a cover for this business, uh, often crime-sponsored, uh, uh, and uh, in 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 this situation, Azeris are incorporating to Chechen networks. And uh, what is very interesting, they are converting to Sunnism. Uh, so we have uh, in uh, <clears throat> Gardabani municipality, the uh, growth of, uh, uh, the growth of, uh, 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 of uh, Sunnis uh, in, in uh, some, uh, villages, uh, the share of uh, Sunni people are uh, growing to 40 percent. So, uh, and it, it, it this uh, very fast Sunnization happened in, uh, you know, just 10, 15 years, uh, last 10, 15 years. And uh, it is uh, it is yeah very interesting process uh, as how how Azeris from Georgia are incorporating to Chechen networks and uh, you know uh, becoming the part of 
transnational Muslim network with uh, Chechen participation. <clears throat> Uh, so why uh, these two networks, uh, uh, Dagestani and Chechen based uh, uh, networks uh, are acting in so different way? Uh, the Chechen Sufi networks are ethnically oriented. So we can talk about Chechen Sufism and Dagestani Sufis in 2000s overcame these ethnic limitations uh, and uh, made their communities international. So building trans, trans regional and transnational networks and uh, they uh, were competing with Salafi networks. Uh, but uh, talking about the Chechen uh, Muslim transnational networks, they are non-Sufi. So, uh, you know, uh, because Chechen trans, -re trans regional ethnic and religious networks uh, practically coincide um, so uh, the Dagestani networks can be easily used to promote Sufism in Russian regions and in other countries, but Chechens uh, will not, so uh, cannot. So uh, we, we have these two uh, different networks and uh, they are acting differently and uh, Chechen networks, you know, divided. Uh, so we have Chechen ethnic and religious Sufi networks, uh, and they uh, will remain just Russian transregional networks. And also we have Chechen uh, Muslim transnational network, uh, which is non-Sufi and which, uh, you know, can uh, act outside of Russia and uh, make also very interesting things because Sunnization of Azeris in Georgia is very interesting and uh, it's not uh, linked with uh, uh, with uh, Turkey, it's not linked with Azerbaijan and uh, it's uh, just, you know, uh, part of a transnational uh, Russian Georgian network and uh, who knows, maybe they will work with other countries and make uh, the uh, bigger uh, transnational network. Uh, and uh, uh, unfortunately, I don't have uh, a lot of material on Central Asia, but also Central Asians are uh, the part of uh, these transnational networks. Uh, uh, they are uh, also part of uh, Salafi networks, I know, and uh, they are actively participating. Uh, and, and I think that uh, the research in Central Asia will also give us a lot of material. But uh, what, what uh, does it mean? It's, it, mean that, it means that uh, the... Uh, uh, transnational networks are becoming very important in uh, Muslim space uh, in in, uh, in post-Soviet countries, and uh, they are making uh, very interesting thing. They are, you know, um, linking people uh, in various countries. And uh, uh, the, the, these transnational networks are especially uh, post-Soviet because, you know, they all know uh, Russian language. They all, uh, you know, uh, are post-Soviet people. So uh, this is very interesting how Islam is using to make, you know, the new uh, the new networks between these uh, post-Soviet Muslim peoples and uh, post-Soviet countries. 